Hi, this is Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass with an afternoon update for Thursday, September 10th. It's exactly 1.45 as I'm starting the video. Okay, let's go through this. Um, I can't impress upon you guys enough what a critical spot we're at. I mean, there's a huge difference between looking for long setups by the dip or are we going to break down and take a leg lower? I mean, it's just that simple. So I've been hyper focused on the indexes and FANG. I, I really believe that they hold the key to everything, at least here in the next, you know, week to 10 days, if not longer. So let's take a look at it. Uh, we came up this morning to this 342 level on SPY. We touched it several times. And if you go to lower time frames, you'll see that we uh, tagged that level twice yesterday. An initial tag, reaction back, came up again, sold into the close. This morning, gap up, uh, hung out there for about an hour could not get through and then they took it down to the bottom of the box and we've been bouncing right along the bottom for the last couple of hours three hours something like that and you can always tell when a line is really important when nobody wants to make that first move are the are they gonna save it run it up this afternoon or is it going to fail? And then we drop down below this 338 uh, on the lower half of this recent trading range and push down towards this 333 level. So I'm watching that really, really carefully. Uh, we're, we're hanging by a thread as I speak right now at a quarter, uh, quarter to two. And as it happens most times, it's going to be how the pros close it you know, between 2.30 and 4 as to where we'll stand at the end of the day. Uh, I want you to take note up here. We did have a bearish PPO cross. And in my experience, when you get a rise after a sell-off and you get that PPO rise up to the zero line and then it rolls over, it's usually a very bearish sign. Uh, now that doesn't mean they can't just dip down below here and then run it up. That can happen. I've seen that happen. But if this were to drop below 338 this afternoon and move towards the lows, this is going to have a much more pronounced rollover. And this RSI will have a much more pronounced bearish look than it does right now. Uh, certainly savable here. They certainly can, you know, use that as support and gun it up. We'll just have to wait and see. Cues. Now, same thing. Uh, bearish PPO cross, not quite as pronounced as SPY. And RSI dipping back down below 50. Uh, this morning... You guys know that I was short and I had set 280 as a stop. And basically what we had here was a prairie dog. You know, it pops its head up and then it goes back down. Well, I closed my positions like I said I would on a move above 280. And then on a move back below, back into the trading range, I got short again. So I'm sitting short. My size is not as big as it was yesterday, but I'm back short again. And really, if you want a trading tip, if you're trading the Qs, look at SPY. It's something I was watching, but I didn't... Uh, you know, I thought I thought the cues were going to lead, and I thought spy was going to break out. That's where that was that was my thought process. But spy didn't break out, and whenever you're 
you know, you're trading one or the other, if you think there's a breakout, the other one can hold it up. SPY could not get through 342. It, it tried multiple times. It could not get through. And at the end of the day, SPY led to the downside. Now, this is a live chart. So you can see that that price has moved back down below this 277.50. I truly believe that 275 is the real line. If this afternoon, you know, we come down here and break 275, then I think we come down to this 270 for another test of the 50. They can certainly save it here, pop it back above, you know, 277.50, or they can come down to 275 and hold the line and, and bounce it. We'll just have to see. But the FANG names are very weak. So we'll get into that uh, in a minute. But as it stands now, it looks bearish. Certainly savable, but it's doing what we thought it would do is come up, find resistance, and roll over. There may still be a leg up. We don't know. But at this point, I mean, you've got to say that, you know, it, it reached a peak and it has rolled over. Now we'll see how far it goes. IWM, uh, I haven't been paying that much attention to. It's not really doing anything. But here again, it came up to this 154 and got rejected. That was a level that we had identified. Um, I'm sure that's, you know, kind of been a frustrating trade if you were in it and it was up and then, you know, then it got rejected. If SPY and the Qs roll over, this is coming down. It may not come down as fast or as quick or as far, but it's coming down. And for me, the key level is 150. If that breaks, then I think you got 250. Uh, not in the bag, but that would be my target, uh, 147.50. I thought this is very interesting. This is my extremo meter put to call ratio. They're buying calls. People are buying, are trying to buy this dip, and and they think that this is a place to pile in. Okay, you can see anything above the red line is basically excessive call buying. Nobody buying puts. Everybody's buying calls. And I think at this juncture, you know what my thought process is, is that this is the time these people get run over. Time will tell. That's the way I'm looking at it right now. Um, the buy the dip moment is when there's a flush and you see put buying extremes down here at the lows. That's when you want to step in at the, when fear is in the street and people have piled in buying a zillion puts because the world is ending. That's where you step in. And if you go back and look at this chart, you can see that this meter does a great job at nailing lows. It's not that good at nailing highs. You can see all this call buying didn't result in any big pullbacks. It's the put buying, the put buying extremes where this uh, metric does really well. And that's what I'm looking for. I want to see some put buying. I want to see some fear and then we'll know that the bottom is close. Uh, semiconductors was up 1%. Now it's down. Notice how the declining 20 and 8 EMAs has acted like resistance. Alarm that 162. If there's a break there, I think it's going to go fast. Facebook not doing anything. It's holding the line. Um, <clears throat> it went up for a couple of uh, touches here this morning at 278.75, got rejected, but it is holding support. 
uh, all things said and done, uh, it's uh, holding the line here at 273. Apple, not doing so good. Uh, just a minute ago when I started the uh, video, it had broken the day low. Now it's testing uh, this gap up from yesterday. If this uh, 115 breaks, I think you see 112.50 pretty fast. So we'll see. This is a this is a critical spot for Apple here at uh, 115. Uh, pretty weak. Amazon again, you know, went up and and touched uh, this morning. This uh, uh, 33.35 level got rejected and is now down at this 32.50 level, critical level. If the queues are going to break, it's going to take Apple and Amazon and these other names to break lower from these from these key levels. I think if you see 32.50 go, I think you got 3,200 as a target and then uh, 31.50. So there's potentially $100 of, of um, downside right here on a break of uh, 32.50. The bulls are going to have to uh, step in here right at this moment to uh, prevent this from you know, moving down. Microsoft has been weak all day. We had identified this 215 area, tagged it twice this morning. Now it's $7 below. It, you know, we're down at 208. We opened up at 215. That would have been a great trade to take. Might have been a hard one to take, but it was at resistance and now it's dropped down below. I don't have the opening gap from in here marked, but you can see it's right here at this uh, 207 level. If that were to break, we're coming back down in this 204 area. You can see the PPO never made it up to zero. It's rolling over well below. And if this crosses over, then that's a pretty bearish technical move. A PPO bear cross well below the zero line. It, um, it doesn't get much more bearish than that. And you can see RSI never made it above 50. Microsoft has been very weak uh, this morning. Google hasn't been doing much. It, it, it tried to get into the gap uh, this morning and has since rolled over. It's sitting here at the flat line uh, where it opened. So the line to look for is this 1540. If that were to break, I think uh, I think you'll start seeing uh, the ball roll downhill. You know, it's going to test this prior low at 1520, and then we'll see what happens. Again, see how weak the the uh, PPO momentum profile is. We got the swoon down. We got a very feeble bounce. And now it's flattening out and threatening to roll over. Same thing with RSI. It never even got to 40 uh, here. And now it's uh, rolling over. Netflix. Uh, that 505 has been a wall. And now it's testing this uh, 495. It looks like it's dropped below uh, just in the last few minutes. So the line in the sand for me is this 485. If, if that level breaks, there's probably a lot going on in the broader markets. I would expect this level to hold if the market holds. And if it doesn't, then I think you've got you know a high probability short there if uh, this 485 fails. Tesla, uh, this just happened uh, as I started the video. It had gapped up this morning. A lot of 400 call buyers. I mean, everybody piling in. This is the, this is the moment. It's going up to 420 at a minimum. We're going to cash in. It stalled. 
and now it's filling the morning gap. Looks like it's coming back down here to 370. If, if you were interested in trading Tesla, hold the line and wait and see what happens to price at 370. If 370 breaks, this, you know, this gap up, move into the, into the, um, into this gap fails. And then it comes back and fails at 370. I think you've got a nice short there. Uh, we'll have to see, you know, if, if indeed that happens. So just hold the line. I'd be real cautious about, you know, at this juncture, piling in long and trying to capture this. Um, you know, if you got down to 370 and it held, I think that's your, if you want to try along and you think it's all going to hold, that's your objective level, 370 uh, at this uh, gap support. But below there, you gotta, you've got to, uh, you've got to flip your bias, in my opinion, that uh, then then the downside opens up after this failed move. So anyways, that's a quick look. Uh, I'm going to remain hyper-focused on this this afternoon. I, I Like I said, I think it's the key to everything. Um, if, you're, if you bought the dip, if you've been... Um, using this opportunity to pick up some uh, stuff that is, you know, sold off in that move. That's fine. Just know where your stop is. I, I have been known to be wrong before. So don't think everything I say is gospel because it's not. It's just, you've got to have a bias. Um, I think it's very difficult to, you know, if I'm short, obviously my positions speak for themselves. I think this was a, a fake out move. But that said, buying the dip has always worked, you know, in this run. So the dipsters may be right again. So we're going to find out. And I don't think it's going to take long to, to discover which thesis is right. They're either going to hold the line and jam it higher this afternoon or tomorrow, or it's going to fail. I think your line in the sand going back to SPY and QQQ is, you know, these lows, the, the lows of uh, the other day. I think if this goes down, and, you know, we get down into this uh, three, three, uh, 35 area. And that fails. You know, I mean, we're going down to 333. And then if the prior low fails, then I think you've got to take a hard look at whatever, you know, longs that you had put in place on this by the dip. So... Uh, I can see here they've started a green candle right here. So we'll see. There's two hours left in the session. I'll get this out to you right away. Uh, good luck in the rest of the day. And uh, as always, know where you're getting out and know where you're getting in. So keep those stops in, in mind and in place and respect them if they get clipped. If you're right, Know where your targets are, know where you're heading, and know what your game plan is ahead of time. So this has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. I hope the information helped. Have a good rest of your trading day. Talk to you next time.